Okay guys, it's Unders, I'm in with a, another Logic video. In this video, I'm gonna go over aux channels, so using these for reverbs and as well as sort of mix bus channels and things like that. If you haven't watched the, uh, going over the mixer video in Logic, I suggest watching that first, because it's gonna go into some more of the advanced features you have inside the mixer. So, let's get into that. Say my name aloud. Hello guys again, we are in Logic and now we're going to have a look at auxiliaries and buses in the mixer. So if these videos are being helpful for you, please pop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel and if there are any other videos you would like or comments you wish to make, throw those down below and I will do my best to get back to you in there. Now, we've just gone over the basic overlay of the mixer in yesterday's video and now I'm just going to show you what I use the busing and auxiliary options for. Okay, so the busing and auxiliary options are where you can see I've got bus 6 here with a little wheel next to it showing how much send is being sent to that auxiliary and below it in these grey boxes are buses and I use these to group up particular pieces of audio. So a great example in here is going to be drums. If you go far over to the right, this is how I organize my mixer and we can have it so we just display auxiliaries for example. And now we've got the drums. So now I've got my entire track just condensed to these few faders here. Real simple, that is the drum bus. And when we turn all these back on, you can see that all my drums in this section here go to bus two. And if I click over here, and we can see bus two is labeled drums, dead simple. So you can highlight everything you want to go into that channel, selecting it here, you can then click and hold, and we can then choose the bus that that goes to, and that will send everything then to bus two and give us this drum auxiliary. Now, if one of these isn't created, you can simply create one. So I can do this and go to bus and I could choose 10, for example, which doesn't exist. These will now, now all be going to B10, bus 10, which it would have created over here. Now it's shown up as auxiliary eight because I haven't used the other two. I can now label this drums two, just for an example. And now all the unprocessed drums end up in here because they're not being processed by this channel anymore. Can highlight all these again and put them back to where they were. I must remember not to save this as well. Can put that back onto drums there. And now there will be nothing here. We can get back to here and they'll be here. Now that allows me to batch process the drums as well. And as you can see, I have done that. I've processed them to get the drum bus sound that I wanted and fit them in with the mix with everything else that's going on. Now, the other thing that you can use these for are sends. So sends are really useful when you want to put multiple things into reverb, delay, and that sort of thing. You don't necessarily want to have 10 reverb plugins loaded up. Um, as you can see, a lot of these go to six, for example. And if we have a look at bus six, I think that's gonna be, yeah, what's called the Lexi. And that is because it is this reverb here, which is based on the Lexicon. And that's got all the vocals going in. Now, instead of loading a reverb on every single vocal, I send the ones that I want at a particular level into the reverb to then get the sound of that vocal being contained in that one reverb. That way I only have to process it once, I only have to set it up once, and it's much more efficient in terms of CPU usage. That properly talk like a don because I am on watch me. This ain't battle rap, don't try flop me. I and that gives us all of our vocal sound there. And as you can see, because I've used different buses and areas, I can completely separate that up. Uh, I have a main vocal bus. Feel unstoppable, you can't. I also have then a hook vocal bus. Now, the reason we get sound in there is because I'm feeding the reverb back into this area here and processing it as well. So when it comes into the hook, it adds another effect in. Um, 
not something you should necessarily do but it worked for me particularly in this track also notice i mixed the uh, hook a little bit loud so i've reduced it by two decibel allowing me to rebalance all of those vocals just by dropping that down straight away that's another real benefit of using auxiliary tracks so i hope that little breakdown was useful for you guys um, I shall see you on the next video. Please comment down below if there's anything else you'd like me to break down in the mixer.